My coverage of CES 2018 from Las Vegas, Nevada is brought to you by Cooler Master, Enermax, OCZ Toshiba, and Deepcool. All right, guys, I'm over at Caesars and we're visiting Gigabytes. They have quite a few things on display. Actually, a lot of the stuff has already been released, but I think I have a motherboard right here that you might be interested in. If you watched my AMD video, you know that Ryzen 2 is coming, coming very soon in April. So here I have the very first X470 motherboard that I have laid hands upon. So let's take a closer look. So here it is, and this is the Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi. This is gonna be more towards the high end of the Gigabyte Aorus offerings when it comes to this particular platform. Still using the same AM4 socket, so it's still backwards compatible with uh, the original Ryzen lineup of processors such as the 1800X and the R5 1600, but the 2000 series, the Ryzen 2s, coming in April, we'll also be able to slot right into this motherboard. Now, what we're not 100% sure of yet is what the performance difference is gonna be, if at all, when it comes to the raw CPU performance. We'll hopefully find out more about that as we get closer to launch, but um, that aside, we can see a very nice set of features with this motherboard. First off, when it comes to power delivery, especially for overclocking, we're hoping and expecting that the Ryzen 2 processors, since they're gonna be on a 12 nanometer process instead of 14 nanometer, might be better overclockers, and of course, you're gonna to need to provide plenty of juice for that. So you'll notice uh, a very thin, dense array here of actual fins with heat sinks below them to allow air to pass through them for optimal heat dissipation. This is the type of fin array for cooling of VRMs that we've kind of been missing for a while, but it's good to see that it's coming back as overclocking, uh, I don't want to say maintains or becomes more popular. Uh, but this motherboard has a 10 plus two phase power delivery configuration. They're uh, IR, or International Rectifier um, Power Delivery Components that they're using in there. It's got an eight pin and a four pin supplemental CPU power connector. Uh, we can see, of course, our four standard DIMM slots for DDR4 memory. And then in the upper right, uh, you have a few extra little buttons and stuff. There is an RGBW header um, for connecting up your LED lights. You got an OC button to access some of the OC functions, and you also have a, a surface mounted reset button there as well. Looking down just below that, we have a couple switches. One is to switch between BIOS A and BIOS B. The other is to switch between uh, single BIOS and dual BIOS mode. We got a debug LED. You can see a group of four pin PWM fan control uh, or fan connectors right there as well. There's a USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector on there, the uh, updated version, so that's always nice to have. And then down in the bottom right, you can see our SATA ports. Uh, six of them are, is the standard here, and one of them is kind of busted. This is a, this is a sample motherboard, and it's been uh, manhandled quite a bit from what we can tell. So there are a couple aesthetic problems, such as some of the fins on the heatsink have uh, snapped off up there in the top right, as well as, of course, that SATA port. But don't worry, if you actually get one of these motherboards, it's not going to not going to have those issues. They have bumped you up to an additional M.2 slot, so you can see one that's uh, up there above the top uh, GPU slot or by 16 PCI Express slot, and then you've got another one further down. Top one looks like it can go up to 110 length, and this one is a standard 2280. They both have some beefy looking heat sinks on there to uh, provide some additional heat dissipation for your M.2 drives. And then down at the bottom, we can see pretty standard configuration and layout for front panel connectors, USB, and all that good stuff. On the back of the board, we have a, a sort of a, a back plate, a, a quarter back plate. A quarter back plate? I think I just made a football reference. I don't know what the heck's going on. Uh, but it's got a bit of an orange accent on there, and uh, I, I'm guessing it provides a little bit of added protection for the bottom of the motherboard. And then finally for I.O. here, we have a permanently attached I.O. shield, and uh, these are becoming more and more popular and more and more common, and I really like it. It's got a, a bit of a reflective finish on there. And then since this is the Wi-Fi version, we got a couple connection points there for Wi-Fi antenna. It's got an Intel uh, Wi-Fi card in there. There are surface mounted power and BIOS reset buttons here at the back. I really like those as a feature on a motherboard. Uh, my, my top five motherboard features video, that's one of the things I pointed out. Now we've also got a fair amount of uh, USB. We got a USB 3.1 Gen 2. Uh, and then we also have these uh, yellow ports, and those are specifically made for connecting up uh, external DACs, uh, and they have very clean power going to them to prevent any inter interference there. Finally, you got your uh, standard I.O. for audio and an optical toss link out, and that pretty much wraps it up. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video and my first ever look at the new generation of motherboards for AMD Ryzen and Ryzen 2 processors. Again, coming out in April and Gigabyte said that they're gonna match AMD's launch. So when AMD launches Ryzen 2, 
Gigabyte will also launch the new series of motherboards. And of course, there's going to be other, other uh, X470 motherboards besides just this one. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. And of course, a final thank you to my sponsors for CES 2018, OCZ Toshiba, Deep Cool, Cooler Master, and Enermax. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.